DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, B site to boost your playing up to the next level. Okay, so a little funny thing over there, playing from tenor sax to trumpet. But I actually, it wasn't so much to be funny, it was actually to illustrate a point. Overtones are like lip slurs on a brass instrument. So lip slurs are generally done with one valve setting, whether it's open valve, second, all right, that's all done with um, controlling the airstream, uh, tongue level, but mostly hearing. And again, in my first part about how to play overtones, I talk extensively about how important it is to develop what Sigurd Rascher calls in his Top Tones book, tonal imagination, okay? Brass players, we don't call it that. We call it hearing the pitch before you play it, okay? And you've got to do that if you want to have success with overtones on the saxophone. So today, what I wanted to do, um, I got a bunch of terrific questions off of my part one video, and I wanted to answer them because I think that they're going to help, the answers are going to help everybody, okay? So I'm actually going to answer uh, a question someone had asked, Graham had asked, can you play a tune by just using overtones? Well, I just did. Okay, I just played a bugle call, and I kind of was funny about it because I started on tenor and then uh, continued on trumpet. But you could do bugle calls. Um, I've heard of people doing la cucaracha. You know, um, you could actually even, you could do like some simple songs like Mary Had a Little Lamb uh, in the extreme high overtones as well. So yes, you can play uh, some simple songs and bugle calls, okay, on uh, using overtones. Trumpet players, you know, do it all the time. Look at buglers, right? No valves. Okay, they do it all the time. Okay, the next question was from Vinny. Do I really need to sing the note before I play it? When you're first working on these, absolutely. Okay, because again, it goes back to one of the first things that I said. You know, uh, brass players, we call it hearing the pitch before you play it. If I don't hear what, let's say, um, I don't know, a C sounds like, then instead of this is going to come out. Now, can you hear the difference between the two pitches? We had and all right. The second one was me not hearing the pitch, certainly not hearing it in tune. All right. The same thing's going to happen on a saxophone. Okay. There's a lot of play. There's a lot of leeway in terms of pitches. So, um, for example, Okay, the last two attempts were me just really not hearing it at all. Okay, so that answers Vinny's question and Graham's question before that. Um, the other really incredible question I had was from Barry Guy, and he asked, Okay, I've heard it read many times how important overtones are, and I practice them, but how do I apply them to my playing? This is a great question. He goes on, If I can play an F overtone, one octave above my B flat while fingering a B flat, does that mean I should apply the same throat opening, air support, embouchure while reaching this F overtone when playing an F? Is that what overtone practice is supposed to teach me besides helping me create a richer tone when playing B flat? If the purpose is to only play a richer, more complex B flat, <laughs> then which of these overtone mechanics am I supposed to use when playing the B, B flat? I hope this isn't a dumb question, but I've never heard anyone explain the purpose in detail. No, it's an amazing question. Here's the deal. Overtones, uh, in direct answer to your question, you know, if you play like an F overtone fingering the B flat harmonic fingering, like the low B flat, okay, is the same setting inside your mouth. Is that going to be the same as when you're playing? Um, and F regularly, okay? Um, not necessarily, all right? It isn't. However, what overtone practice helps you to do, it's not to work on specific notes. It's to help your tone overall, okay? So you had mentioned, and I tried to emphasize this with the way I was speaking, 
your question was, is that what overtone practice is supposed to teach me besides helping me create a richer tone when playing B flat? No, when playing everything. So it's going to fill up your sound for everything. Okay. Um, it's also going to help your intonation. It's very easy. It's very easy to play the saxophone. Wrong. Okay, that was just god awful. <laughs> okay, that was really flat in the pitch. Um, it just wasn't good. But by doing the overtone practice, and again, Vinny, you got to sing the notes before you play them. By singing the notes, by hearing them in your head. Okay, I have my certain method of doing this, and I use this with all my students. But you've got to hear that note before you play it, um, and while you're playing it. By doing that, train yourself to do that. You won't play your B flat. You'll play it, okay, you'll play it more in tune, and you'll play it with a fuller, richer sound, okay? So the purpose of overtone practice, a few things, definitely for a beautiful tone, tone production, okay? So beautiful tone, full, rich tone, tone production, meaning that tonal imagery, okay, hearing it before you play it, and intonation, all right? Again, the shape of the inside of your mouth, all that kind of stuff, the breath support, it's not exactly the same. It's close, but it's not exactly the same. Okay, so that was a fantastic question. That was not a dumb question at all. And I hope that that answer explained it in enough detail to you. Again, I would strongly encourage everyone um, to get the Top Tones book by Sigurd Rascher. Now, here's the thing. I don't recommend that you start off with overtones. I said this in the other video. I don't recommend that you start off with overtones um, right away. I think you need to get a solid foundation with some long tones and having a, a decent range. You have to be able to play the lower foundation pitches. And if you're playing the lower foundation pitches, uh, like the low B flat or the low B with, you know, a too loose setting or drop jaw, or, you know, you're not able to get those pitches to come out consistently, um, that's not going to help your overtone playing. Okay, so... I would definitely recommend, you know, get that Top Tones book after you're able to do that. Okay, the next uh, couple of questions had to deal with getting particular pitches out. And this one was from Chista Fanor. I hope I said that right. Um, he asked, is there a difference with the alto sax? I can hardly play second B flat and D above that is impossible unless I open slightly the top D key, the palm key. Um, listen, I... The overtone exercises for all the saxophones, okay? So, as I said in the last video, it's all about being patient, all right? You must be patient. Now, you mentioned the, uh, let's see, I want to address the D one. The D above, that's this pitch. That's just normal. That's uh, impossible for you to play unless you slightly open up the D palm key. Okay, so here's what I'm going to suggest, and here's a tip for everybody. Some notes are going to be really hard to get. So what you can do, first you need to hear the pitch, all right? You need to be able to sing the pitch. So, da, I know I'm hearing it because I could sing it. What I can do is finger it normally and then quickly move to the harmonic fingering. But remember, no octave key on the harmonic fingering. So if you need that extra reinforcement of... You know, you're hearing the pitch, you're singing it, but you need to also kinesthetically feel that pitch. Then there's no harm in playing it first with a normal fingering and then going to the overtone or the harmonic, you know, fingering for that. So that is a good question. There is no difference between the saxophones. Okay. I will say this though. Uh, there's no difference between the saxophones in terms of how to do overtone practice, but um, some notes on some horns are difficult to get. Some notes on some brands of horns are difficult to get, okay? So that's something to just really, um, to really keep in mind. And I'm going to say the same thing with your other part of your question, the second B flat. So I think you mean this pitch. Okay, so I hope that that answered that particular question. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of tips, um, some ways to, you know, kind of bypass some harder fingerings. 
a lot of times we start on the B flat fundamental fingering, low B flat, right? Well, why not, if that's really tricky, why not start on C sharp, okay? Right, so low C sharp fingering. <laughs> no harm in starting on C sharp. Now, the other thing I need to say, and I said it in the last video, you don't use the octave key, okay? It's not going to help you, and it's, it's, it's not even a shortcut, okay? So do not use the octave key. Here's the other tip that I know um, when I was exposed to overtones, I was told to not articulate, okay? So basically do breath attacks. The reason why well, number one, I want to take out the variable of my tongue starting the note. I want to make sure that I can produce the note. Okay, so instead of going, um, instead of articulating like this, I would use a breath attack. Okay, it's a little bit more, a little bit more of a challenge, but also it's helping me to understand that I'm producing the sound. I'm not, you know, starting the sound with, you know, articulating on the reed. Okay, so that's a little extra bonus tip for you right there. Now, getting back to Barry Guy's question, where he asks about how does overtone practice relate to really anything else that you do? Well, you know, when you're taking a solo or you're reading music, you're playing in a community band, it's not going to be like, oh, okay, I'm going to be playing overtones, unless it's written in the music. No, what overtone practice is going to help you with is if you find that you're out of tune with a couple of notes, you're not adjusting here, you're adjusting in here, and you're also adjusting up here. And that's where the overtone practice comes in. Because all that work on singing, yes, Vinny, singing, <laughs> singing the pitches, hearing them beforehand, and then working it through through the overtone practice, will definitely play out in whatever music that you like to play. Now, if you want to up your game when it comes to jazz improvisation, but you know what? You need to know exactly what to study, what to work on in order to make progress. So I've got a free video lesson for you. Just tell me a little bit about yourself, and then you're going to get a free video lesson that's going to be your next best step for making progress with jazz improvisation. I'm going to put the link below in the show notes, so definitely check that out. Hey, thanks for joining me today. If you like this video, give it a like, give it a share, subscribe. Okay, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you in the next video. On that note, take care. Have a great day.